Good morning. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Brother Todd, for the singing, wonderful singing. Sing and be happy. And uh, that is the uh, title of our series that we are discussing. And um, is everybody happy? All those in Zoom, they are all happy. So good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And those who are in our Zoom, a uh, pleasant good morning to all of you. I hope you can see how handsome I am, according to my mom. <laughs> She's the only person that uh, tells me I'm handsome. <laughs> my daughter, you're not. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so I'm glad that you are all here today. I know that you are excited because you won't be here if you're not. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, while we are singing the song, um, I'm so very happy. So I'm so glad. I'm so excited to be here and to, to see all of you. And, you know, to see all those faces of yours, it depicts what a truly happy man and a woman uh, in the Lord. So may God be praised in all of our lives as we go on with our uh, daily lives. So today we will start with our second part of our happy series. So we are in our uh, second part. And um, by the way, who's not here last week? Raise your hand. Who's not here last week? I can, I can tell who's not. Yeah. And even in the Zoom, I know, I think there's someone... Uh, who's not here last week. So, those who are not here last week, for your benefit, I will repeat the lesson last week. From the top. So, those who are present last week, like Sister Jessie here, Sister Gloria, you, know, you can just sit down there quietly and listen again from the top. <laughs> anyway, so, our <clears throat> lesson, let's see our lesson, Happy Series Part 2. You know, um, just give me a little, little minute or a few minutes. I cannot help but to tell you the story about this, uh, this emoji. While I was browsing the internet looking for an emoji, a happy face, when I chance upon this face, it reminds me of someone. Actually, I was giggling. I was chuckling, I was, you know, laughing at myself. You know why? Because it reminds me of someone. <laughs> when I saw this face, it reminds me of myself. You know, I always, somehow, you know, well, it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Now, in general... What does man seek in his lifetime? Okay. What does man seek in his lifetime? Brother Kennedy, in general, without being so religious, what do you seek in your lifetime? Happiness? Um, Brother Joshua, am I right? What do you seek in, 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 in your lifetime? Happiness. Exactly. So I guess everybody here, we are seeking happiness, right? Again. <laughs> now, according to Blaise Pascal, according to him, all men seek happiness, right? There are no exceptions. However different the means they may employ, they all strive towards this goal. The reason why some go to war and some do not is the same desire in both. But interpreted in different ways. They, the will, never takes the least step except to that end. And this is the motive of every act of every man, including those who go and hang themselves. Now, you see, my brothers and sisters and friends, without talking about religion, 
all that man sick, all that, all of us, all of you sick, is happiness. Right? Happiness. Now, what will make me happy? What will make you happy? That is all that we seek in our lifetime. Right? Now, surprisingly enough, <clears throat> look at that statement right there. Including those who hang themselves. Those who take their own life and commit suicide. Those who take their lives were those who were unhappy. Those who commit suicide, those are the people who are miserable, who are tired of living, and ultimately, the only way for them is to end their misery and free them from their, from their unhappiness. What is their, what is their recourse? to take their own lives. Why? So they can be finally be happy. Tragic, isn't it? Very, very, very tragic. Very unfortunate for people, you know, to equate, to equate happiness with suicide. Now, Pascal's observation is correct. Our main goal or our end goal is happiness, even those who commit suicide. Now, last week, I did mention that the real problem is this. Our real problem is we don't know how to be happy. Basically, people do not have any idea how to be happy. We said, all right, in general, in general, man's purpose for his life is to be happy. The reason why we are truly unhappy is because, why? We look... <clears throat> <clears throat> happiness in the wrong place. We look happiness in the wrong place. We put our happiness on things. We put our happiness on persons. We put our happiness on certain events. The happening or happening or not happening of which applies. Last week, we, we, uh, remember, we talked about it. And if you put your happiness on money, of course, you will be happy. But it is only temporal. If and when your money is no more, or if you are sick and your money cannot do anything to make you well, you will be unhappy. I remember a good friend of mine back home. He's so rich. Really, really rich. You know, during the, the COVID onslaught, he got sick. He got sick. And no doctors cannot attend to him because he had to undergo a COVID test. And it will take at that time three to, four, uh, three to five days before the result will come back to you. So he was alone in his small room, in his private room, waiting for the doctor. And he was in pain. He was shouting. He was cursing all the doctors, all his friends, because no one is attending him. All that they did to give him, you know, uh, for, for his cough. But the main problem, what's the problem with him? The doctors cannot diagnose first without being cleared of COVID. You see, for three to five days, he was isolated. And after a few months, he was well. You know what he told me? Brother Mike, I was in the darkest time of my life at that time. Even though I am rich, my money cannot do anything for me. I am unhappy. I think I was about to die. See, money cannot make us really happy. Alright? Now, again, we look for happiness in the wrong place. Again, Blaise Pascal said, Happiness is neither without us, meaning it is not outside of us, on material things, on things that you can see, nor within us. Happiness is not within you. He said, he observed, it is in God. It is in the union of ourselves with God. After observing okay, that all men seek happiness, Blaise Pascal also observed that real happiness that the real joy is where? In God. In God. 
Then he qualified the word in God. What does he mean when he said in God? It means being in union of ourselves with God. Okay? Maybe Blaise Pascal have read Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And maybe he have experienced real joy in God. That's why he said it is in the union of ourselves with God. You see, brothers and sisters and friends, we are truly unhappy because we look at the wrong place for happiness. We put our happiness in the wrong things, in the wrong place. We look at money. We look at family. We look at our health. We look at our work for happiness. All those things will not truly make you happy. Now, where are we to look for real joy? The Bible tells us. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible, the Bible is very clear where to look for in your real happiness. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank and after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Now, what did we say again? Your life's purpose is to be happy, to be truly happy, and that God wants you to be truly happy, correct? Now, many people are unhappy. Many people are miserable because they are looking at the wrong place to start with. The right place to look for your true joy is where? It's where? It says there, in Him. See? It says, in Him. There. And uh, all other things will just give you temporary happiness. But in God and with God, you will be happy forever. You know, all of us know that God is love. Right? That God is love. Correct? Now, can you tell the person beside you, God loves you? God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And God is love. God is love. Now, here's another thing. Many people do not know that God is happiness. We all know that God is love. Yeah, we always say that God is love, God is love, God loves you. But we don't know that God is happiness. That's why we don't say God is happiness. God wants you to be happy. Very seldom that you can hear a person will tell you God wants you to be happy. Very seldom. But many people will tell you God loves you, brother. God loves you, sister. Right? Again, very few that will tell you God wants you to be happy, brother. God wants you to be happy, sister. Why? Because many of us do not know that God is happiness. Many of us do not equate God and happiness. We equate God with love, but we do not equate happiness with God because we don't know how to be happy. Right? Now, look at this. Look at this. Happiness starts with God. It comes from God. It says that everything God started with who? With God. Even happiness. Even happiness. It starts from God. That's why God is happiness. He is the source of my happiness. That's why. <laughs> I remember when Brother Rex took my picture. Me and uh, Brother Derek was in that room. And when he took my picture, I was... And Brother Derek was laughing at me. <laughs> he was looking at my smile. <laughs> you see? God is happiness. He is the real... Oh, uh, the real source of happiness. And look at what the, what the Bible tells us. There I will go to the altar of God, to the source of all my joy. Uh -huh. There you go. The psalmist David made it clear that the source of all joy is who? Who? God. Right. So those 
that are not obedient to God, who does not have God really in their lives, happiness will, will elude them. That's why many people are unhappy. For the meantime, they are happy. But at the latter part of their life, they become miserable because they don't have God in their life. But those who truly seek God for a true relationship, one that is truly obedient, the Bible said this to you. The Bible have this to say about you. To the person who pleases God, who pleases Him, God gives wisdom, or oh, read with me, knowledge, and happiness. Right? God gave us happiness. <clears throat> but to the sinner, He gives the task of gathering and storing up. Now, look at what God had to say to the sinners. God will take their wealth and give it to whom? Give it to whom? Give it to you. Exactly. We'll give it to you. You know why? Because God wants you to be happy. Because you are obedient to God. God will take away their wealth and God will give it to you because God wants you to be happy. Because you are obedient to God. So, first things first, my brothers and sisters. Change your perspective in life. Change your perspective. And put your happiness in God. How to be truly happy? That's number one. Change your perspective. Okay. Now, people are, are unhappy because they only think of life here on earth. For you to be happy, you must become a visionary. You must be a visionary. Hebrews 12, 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy sat before him and endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The author of Hebrews agrees with the Apostle Paul that whatever happens, let us fix, let us focus our eyes on Jesus. Why? Why should, you, why should you fix your eyes on Jesus Christ? Now, just like Jesus Christ, when he was suffering, he did not lose sight of God. You know why? Because of the joy set before him. And Jesus knew, he knew the real joy that is before him if he remained faithful to the Father. That's why he endured the cross. And what is the joy set before him? What is that joy? What is that joy that is so wonderful and that is so joyful that Jesus could lean towards it and help him endure the cruelty and horror of the cross. Now let us read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10 and verse 16. For he, Abraham, was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Verse 16. Those were longing, referring to the other believer, to the other faithful. They were longing for a better country. A heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. Just like Abraham <clears throat> and all the other faithful, <clears throat> they were looking forward to a better place where there is true joy, where there is true happiness. A place where nobody can rob them of their true joy and happiness. That is why they all also endured. Now Jesus, on the other hand, the joy set before him, is that finally, after 33 years of being 100% human, he will be returning to his original nature as God, as we have seen in our scripture reading, particularly in verses 5 and 8 in Philippians chapter 2. We can see in there that God is God. Oh, Jesus is God. Did not demand and cling to his right as God. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. Revelation 3 verse 21. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my thrones, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. So what was the joy of Jesus? The joy of Jesus that finally 
he will be back home with his father and to have his glory back again. After 33 years, finally, Jesus is back home. He is 100% back. He is back into his original state, being a real God. So, joy is receiving. During Abraham's, uh, Abraham and other faithful that we read in Hebrews 11, joy is receiving, receiving the promise of heaven by God, where there would be no more pain nor sorrow. Now, the author of Hebrews wants us to do the same. You know, as Christians, you and I, we must be visionaries, able to see with clarity what lies in the future. You must see, you must be like Superman, <coughs> able to see what is behind that door, able to see what is behind this wall. Okay. We are to see the true joy behind this life that is waiting for us in heaven. So, we must therefore endure whatever life throws at you and we look upon Jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith. So, number two is that for you to be truly happy, you must become a visionary and live for heaven while you are living here on earth. Number three, people are unhappy because they do not know how to enjoy their blessings. Do you know how to enjoy your blessings? Many people know how, but in the wrong way. I will tell you how to enjoy your blessings for you to be truly happy. Many people do not know how to enjoy their blessings. So, <clears throat> enjoy your blessings. Enjoy your blessings. I often heard this, life is short, Brother Mike. Life is short. Live your life to the fullest. Uh, you, have, you heard that? Probably, I know. All of us heard that. Live your life to the fullest. Well, in some point, that is true. But most people have this to mean, you know, do whatever. Do whatever that will make you happy. Disregarding God in the process. You know, that's where the problem is. You disregard God in your pursuit for real happiness. That is the problem. Apostle Paul knew this concept right from the beginning. He knew that people would say, live your life to the fullest. Enjoy God's blessing. <clears throat> he said, if the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Let us live our life to the fullest for tomorrow you and I will die. You see, he said, if there is no resurrection, the dead are not raised. If there is no God that men will be raised and be held accountable to, if Jesus was not resurrected and all life will end at death and will cease to continue, then he says, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Now many people today have this kind of mindset. Total disregard for their eternal state. They use these so-called blessings to satisfy the pleasures of the flesh. And at the end, instead of joy, it brought them to misery. Because they do not know how to enjoy truly their blessings from the Lord. John chapter 10, verse 10, one of my favorite verses. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life more and better life than they ever dream of. Now, again, my, one of my favorite verse because it tells us, clearly gives us the real intention of Satan, the real intention of God. We are looking at two options. As you can see, there are two options. Options that are really, they are far apart from each other. Now, first, you have Satan. Depicted as a thief. Satan, what he gives to the table, what he gives to you is this. He said, I came to steal, to steal your joy, to rob your joy. And he said, to kill, 
to kill your relationship with God. And finally, he said, to destroy, to destroy you by sending us, by sending you to eternal damnation. Now, that is Satan, and that is what he is offering to the table. And at the other hand, at the right hand, there is God. And God is doing the exact opposite. God is offering and giving you a real and better life that you could ever dream of. You see that? You see that? That you could ever dream of ultimately that is eternal life in heaven. Now, let me tell you, be honest. You have Satan, you have God. Which will you choose? Come on. Which will you choose? They will say, Brother Mike, it's no brainer. It's no brainer. We will choose God. Amen to that. Hallelujah to that. But you know the sad part is, the sad part, let me tell you, many people choose this. You agree? You agree? You agree? Yes. Many people. Look around you. Look at your friends. Look at your family. Look at the community where you live. Many people are choosing God. But we say, it's no brainer, Brother Mike. We choose God. Exactly, that is the sad part. You know, we have brains, but we don't use it the right way. That is the sad part. Now, all these material things that we have, money, cars, clothes, everything, I call them life enhancers. It improves the quality of life. It's good. It's good to have them. There's nothing wrong with them. Don't get me wrong. These are those material blessings from God that God wants you to have and enjoy. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Now, aside from having God in your life, having Him, the joy, your joy is in the Lord. Everything that God provides for us, it is for us for the taking, the material things. And for our spiritual well-being, have given us to us. That's why in other translations of Second Peter one three, you can read, "His divine power has given us everything that pertains to life and that pertains to godliness." Now, what do you need to survive? What do you need to survive? What do you need in life? It is here. God provides it, right? Now, what do you need to learn about God? How to be saved? It is here in the Bible. God provides for it. God gave you wisdom to learn all those things. Now, all these blessings are life enhancers that God wants you to enjoy. Now, but take a look at this carefully. I want you to take a look at this carefully. He said, now all these blessings must lead to what? Must lead to, it says there, for a godly life. All that you have, all that I have, the material things that I have must lead me to a godly life. That is the purpose of our blessing. Life that is not contrary to God. Do you agree? Your money that God gave you, He wants you to enjoy that. God wants you to enjoy that. God wants you to use your money for your family, for you and for your family's well-being. Use it. Use it. God wants you to be a blessing for others. God wants you to use all the things that you have to bless other people. Now, God wants you to use your money, to use all your material blessings to advance His kingdom. Now, the same principle applies. Same principle applies in all other things. In short, life enhancers, these blessings, those blessings of yours, must draw you closer to God and not drift you away from God. It is for a godly life. And that is the concept of blessing, to bring you closer to God. If it drifts you away from God, it is not any long, uh, any, anymore a blessing, but it is a curse. So what do you do with that? You either throw it away, or you give it to someone that will enhance his life towards a godly life. Or else, at the end of your life, God might throw you away instead. You know, the devil is very cunning. 
He is turning these blessings from God into a curse to drift you away from God. Soon, before you know it, you are so far away from God that you cannot come back to God. You see, the devil is robbing you of your real joy. You are made to think. You are made to think that you are enjoying truly God's blessing. In reality, you are not. Instead of bringing you to a godly life, it brought you to a devilish life, I would say. Now, before I finally conclude, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to talk to all of you parents, just like I am. Now, can I talk to you parents from the heart? Let me talk to you. I know how we love our children. I know how you love your children. I know it gives us joy when we provide for them because it makes them happy. Now, if those material things that we gave them are slowly creating a gap between their relationship to us, their relationship to God, and in some way, it is changing their good behavior to a bad behavior, then, my dear parents, you need to do something. Maybe those blessings that were supposed to bring the family closer are becoming a curse. Maybe those blessings that were supposed to make him a better child is making him a bad child. Maybe that blessing is becoming a curse to them. Again, I am saying this from the heart. I have seen this happen to many families. And I, do, and I, I, I don't want that to happen in any of your family before it's too late. Of course, you cannot do it out of love. Now, brethren and friends, real joy can only be found in God. In God. Not within us, not, not without us. We are unhappy because we put our happiness on temporary things. If you put your happiness in what is permanent, then you can be truly happy. Happiness is only temporary without God, but eternal with God. We are unhappy even if we have many things in life because we do not know how to truly enjoy God's blessings. Now, learn to fully understand how to enjoy God's blessings and all those blessings of yours, remember, must lead you to a godly life. As we are living here on earth, live for heaven. Strive for heaven. Now, next week, we will continue our part three of our happy series. So, better be here again or you will miss God and your fellow brothers and sisters. Remember, God wants you to be happy. If you are having doubts about your relationship with God or want to make sure that you have a right relationship with Him, you know, come forward, please. I, I beg you, come forward. If you have any problem, come forward. Let this congregation know. Let the elders know. Let the deacons know of anything that we could help you with. God wants you to be happy, to be truly happy, and we want you to be truly happy. If any amongst you, even in those that are in Zoom, are entangled with sins, let the blood of Jesus free you by coming forward and accepting Him through, through an obedient faith and be one with Him in death and resurrection through baptism. If you have any prayer requests, just like I have, and I give it to Brother Carlos a while ago, and those that are in Zoom, maybe you have also prayer requests. And you can type it there and someone will take note of it. And we will pray for you. We will pray for your family. We will pray for your friends. Now God is waiting. God is waiting. To those who want to accept him, God is waiting. Come forward. Today is the day of salvation. Shall we all stand please as we sing our song of invitation?